Hello everyone, Roy here. Today I want to share with you Local Vocal, the live captions and translation plugin for OBS. Local Vocal is currently working on my microphone and transcribing what I'm saying and displaying it on the screen in real time. So let's see how Local Vocal works. First, you will have to download the plugin and install it in your OBS. To get the plugin, go on the OBS forums and look for Local Vocal, Live Captions and Translation, and hit the Go to Download button. This will take you to GitHub, where you would see the downloads for the operating system that you are currently running. I'm working with Windows, and I have an NVIDIA CUDA 12 GPU. So I'm going to click the installer exe and that would download the installer for local vocal for me. I'm going to wait for that to complete and just run through the steps of the installer until the plugin is installed on the machine. Once the plugin is installed, head over to OBS. In OBS, local vocal is going to show up as a filter for any audio source that you have. So in this case, I have my audio input capture that's capturing my microphone right now. I can click filters in here and that's going to bring up the filters and you can see local vocal in here. Let's remove that and start from scratch. In your audio source, you would click filters, find local vocal transcription in the filter selection. Click that and bring it into place. In most situations, I would recommend adding a noise suppression filter right before local vocal. In this case, I have very clear audio here from my microphone, so I don't really need it. The local vocal transcription filter comes with very basic settings and a whole lot of advanced settings. We'll get to them later. First, you will need to choose where your subtitles are going to come up. You can pick any text source that you have in your scenes right now, or none, which will not send the captions anywhere, or save them to a file. So let's pick local vocal subtitles, which will automatically come up on your scene using the plugin in the first time that you load it up. You can already see the captions coming up on the screen right now. The second thing to consider would be the model. By default, local vocal would use the Whisper Tiny English model. It's the fastest and smallest model for English that works quite well if your audio is high quality. But you may want to consider using bigger models like the bass or small models in case your audio or your pronunciation is somehow a little rough. I would recommend the small model, which is quite powerful, but still not very big and will be able to transcribe in real time if you have a GPU. If you don't have a GPU and you're relying on CPU inference, I would keep it at the Whisper Tiny English. It's a very capable model for English. I'm going to pick the Whisper Small English in this case. Now I'm speaking English and the Whisper models are trained quite well for English language. But if you're using a different language, you will have to pick one of the models that is non-English. And those are trained to pick up almost a hundred different languages and will do that quite well. We can try that right now. I'm going to add local vocal to a French speaking media that I have loaded up in here. I'm going to set up filters, add local vocal change it to small non-English and then under advanced settings, I will scroll down to language and click French. I can also use auto detect, but in this case, I know it's French, so I can set that up. Let's run the media and see the subtitles. Oscar Wilde, le portrait de Dorian Gray, préface, traduction Olivier Geff. Un artiste est un créateur de belles choses. Révéler l'art et cacher l'artiste the next thing to know about local vocal is how to display the captions on screen in a nice flowing way. Let's add local vocal back into the microphone. We can keep it at whisper tiny in this case, and I'm going to open up advanced settings and click buffered output. Buffered output would immediately start sending the captions incrementally into the screen. There's a few ways to control it. One would be the number of lines. Currently it has two lines, but we can make it three, for example, and then choose the characters per line. I usually go with about two lines and then roughly 50 or 60 characters per line if I'm doing English. If you're using a different language that has bigger characters, you may want to limit the characters per line. And that's going to create the effect of the captions coming up almost immediately as I'm speaking. The other thing to know about local vocal is the ability to send the captions not to the screen, but to a file. 
this is very useful in many cases where you want to save an SRT for your recording or interact with the subtitles in a different way outside of OBS. Let's pick an output file name in here and our subs.txt is going to start receiving the captions. This is the file subs.txt receiving the captions as I am speaking. There are a few options here. First one would be to truncate the file on every new sentence I say. If I enable that, then only one sentence will appear in the file. If I disable that, the file will aggregate all the captions, which could be very useful if you are doing some post-processing on your text. We can also ask to save it in SRT format, which is very useful if you are saving with the intent of adding captions to your video. You can also enable the options to only output the text while you are recording, just like I'm doing right now. If I enable this, I'm still recording and you can see that the file is still receiving the captions. Another option if you are streaming is to select the stream captions option. That would send your captions directly to the stream that you are on either YouTube or Twitch or a different streaming service. The next thing to learn about local vocal would be how to translate in real time. To translate the captions, there is the option in local vocal to enable. If I click that, I'm going to have the translation options open up. The whisper based translation would use the whisper transcription model to translate. If I have a non-English model, I can ask translate to use whisper to do direct translation from English into Spanish. This is not running any special model for translation. This is using the transcription model to send out captions in a different language, which is possible with Whisper. However, if you're doing this, you are losing the original English transcription and only getting the translation. If you want to keep both of those, you would have to use a different model than Whisper based translation. In this case, let's choose M2M 100 418, which is a very highly capable model that can also run in real time. I'm going to select that and wait for it to load. Now I'm going to see the translation again back into Spanish, but I can send my captions to a different location. Now I can send my English captions to one text source and I can send my translated captions to a different source. So let's try that. I'm going to create another text source in here and call it translation and just move it up a little bit. And in this case, I'm going to write my translation into the translation text source and the English would stay in the English text source. Now I have the transcription going into one text source and the translation going to another in a different language if you want to create that multilingual effect. Finally, one more thing to learn about local vocal is the suppression sentences. Sometimes whisper models will suffer from hallucination and it will generate some sentences and outputs that are not something that you actually said. You can edit this and add more sentences like that so that when you're getting an output from local vocal that is a hallucination, it will actually skip it and not output as one of your captions. This is Local Vocal, a live transcription and translation plugin for OBS. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.